Hi, my name is Tim Delf. Uh, I've been flying uh, little airplanes uh, here in Alaska and owned airplanes here in Alaska for the last 30 years. Uh, right now we have a raging windstorm going on outside. Uh, we have winds that are uh, up to 65 mile per hour and I've heard that they've been blowing even stronger than that. And every time we have a windstorm come up, uh, I get people who ask me how I, I tie down around the strut. So that's the whole reason I'm making this video. I went online, I've looked on YouTube, I've tried to look through all the images of how tie downs are. And what you see people doing is, is what I consider just using the factory tie downs, which to me is substandard uh, in high winds. And so I want to bring out a couple points today uh, to show you how I do it here. Uh, that's my disclaimer. You know, if you're tying down your own airplane, you're responsible for it. I'm not going to be responsible for how you might be tying down your airplane. And so the purpose today is just to show you how I do it. Uh, a couple of things that uh, I've experienced here in Alaska is uh, the type of tie downs that are used. Some don't work very well at all. Uh, for example, there is a type that is uh, just screws into the ground, like I call it a dog leash type of anchor. That's not effective, it'll just spin right out. Uh, another type uh, a friend of mine purchased was uh, one that had three spikes that went down into the ground. Uh, we were out on a hunting trip out on the tundra. Uh, he drove it in and set it up exactly like the instruction said. I walked over to it, grabbed the line, and just ripped it right out of the soil. So. Uh, very ineffective, at least for our soils. It might be worked somewhere down lower 48, but it does not work here in Alaska. The only two uh, type of anchors that I've found that work here in Alaska, one is what I call the split washer type. That's on a, a steel rod and you actually screw it into the ground and uh, it goes down 12, 24 inches. I mean, you can get them you know, for power lines that go, you know, eight feet almost. But, but most of them that you see the airplanes, I think Sporty sells a kit that's got some that are about 12, 16 inches long, 18 inches long. Uh, that's the kind of kit I carry around uh, in the 182. Uh, if I'm going out to some place like most of us Alaskans do, to a spot that I might be revisiting over and over every year that I like to hunt at, then I tend to use duck bills. Uh, the only issue with duck bills are they, once you put them in the ground, you're probably not going to get them out unless you actually dig them out. And what those are is you drive them in the ground, it's got a little metal piece, and the, the cable is uh, arranged in such a way that when you start pulling on the cable, they turn sideways and create an anchor uh, below the surface. The other thing that I want to talk about briefly was the type of line that you use. I would not use any type of poly line uh, because poly tends to slip and so I only use nylon line. And what I use is this half inch braided nylon. If I was only using a single line I'd probably use something a little larger but I double line all my tie downs. Because like I said we get winds here pretty regularly over 60 to 70 mile per hour multiple times every winter. And then uh, uh, occasionally, every couple of years, we'll get them well over 100. Uh, a few years ago, we had uh, a windstorm that was so bad that ripped siding off of buildings, roof off of buildings, flipped over dozens of airplanes. Uh, and a lot of those was simply because they weren't tied down correctly. Uh, I know in that particular windstorm, the uh, anemometer at the airport uh, read up to 119 mile per hour before it broke, exploded. But what I use is this, this half inch nylon line. It has a braking strength to a little over 5,000 pounds, uh, a working load a little over 1,000 pounds. And since I'm using two of them, uh, I essentially have uh, roughly 20,000 pounds worth of braking force. I did have a, a 170 about 25 years ago that was damaged in a windstorm. And what I had was, was I had lines like these. They were a couple years old, but 
the method that I used at the time was what they call a trucker's hitch. And essentially, you just take this line and you put it like that. And I would run, run my line over the strut, however I want to do it. And then I would use this trucker's hitch to cinch up the line really tight. Well, the problem was when the windstorm came, it broke the line at the knot of the trucker's hitch. And so I get a call in the middle of the night from the fire department saying, hey, your airplane's broke loose. It's turned over. Fortunately, it didn't go all the way over, but the, the opposite wing stopped it from going on over. We got there uh, early enough, or at least the fire department did, to put a strap around the flying wing and get it back down and tied down. Uh, I do not recommend using tie-down straps of any sort, uh, with one exception. I'll describe that here in just a moment. Tie-down straps do not have the same give that nylon line does. Uh, and so what you can have is you can have damage to these brackets. Uh, you can have damage to the tie-down rings itself. And I'll show you a little closer image of that here in a moment of where they will typically get damaged uh, on these airplanes because they've got, they've got no give to them whatsoever. Straps don't, like a two-inch strap, for example. Additionally, the hooks can come out. Um, some people have resolved that by putting a carabiner on it to make sure it doesn't come loose, but still you have no shock absorption there. Now the one exception is, is there is a uh, tie-down strap, and I don't recall the name of it now, that is designed to absorb that shock, uh, and it's got an elastic or a rubber section in it that's designed to stretch a little bit when those gusts do come and, and give it a, a nice sharp wrap. Uh, and so those, uh, I have not used them myself, but I've heard they work pretty good. And those I'd be okay with, but I would not use a regular strap of any sort uh, on your airplane as a, as a primary tie down or restraint. Okay. And uh, additionally, uh, I use a half inch uh, braided nylon. It has uh, roughly a thousand pound working load and a, a little bit better than a 5,000 pound uh, breaking strength. Uh, you can use uh, a three strand nylon. It's about 10% less as strong as this, or you can use something a little heavier, but I would not use anything less than a half inch. Uh, and so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate first on uh, my Super Cup, Miss Piggy here. Uh, and then uh, I'll go next door and show you on a 185 uh, how we uh, tie uh, the struts on the 185. Now I will point out that on a Super Cub, you have the, the option to purchase these Atlee Dodge uh, Hurricane straps. And this is by far the best method to tie your uh, any type of tube and fabric Piper airplane, Piper Cubs or Pacers or anything along that line because this actually goes up around the spar. And so you're, you're not gonna damage this. If, this. if this comes loose, you've got more problems than, than what you would have otherwise. This is the factory option. There are some risks and hazards with using this, and I'll point those out on a close-up here in just a moment. Anyway, I'll get started and I'll show you how uh, I tie down these airplanes. And so what I like to do uh, on these pipers that uh, tube and fabric uh, is I like to come in behind the strut but in front of this aileron pulley. And then you need to pull enough line through to be able to tie it off once you're, once you're finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to come through this eyelet. And the whole idea for coming through this eyelet is to help keep this line from sliding down the strut. Now on the pipers, you've got a narrow area here, so it probably wouldn't anyway. But on a Cessna, this is all one straight tube. And I did see a Cessna once where somebody had just wrapped it around but hadn't secured it up here through the eyelet or the factory tie down. 
it slid down the strut about halfway, then a good wind came along, buckled the strut, bent the wing down, uh, damaged the fuselage. And so make sure, it's the most important part is to, is to secure it up here somewhere, but we're not gonna put any stress necessarily on this tie down. It's all gonna be right here on this strut. And so I'm gonna come back around again the second time through that same gap. I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna cinch it up tight. I'm gonna pull this uh, line that's to the anchor up pretty snug, but I'm gonna leave enough line to where I can grab this line, twist it counterclockwise to form a loop. See that? So I've grabbed it, turn it counterclockwise, and I've formed a loop. I'm gonna take the running end of this line I'm gonna run it through this loop. I'm gonna try not to have too much extra line here because uh, once this cinches up, you're, you're not gonna be able to draw it up any tighter. Now, I've brought the running end through this loop. I'm gonna take it back around and similar to kind of like a modified bowling is what I would call it. You're gonna come through that same gap in that loop and you're gonna cinch everything down and it's not gonna go anywhere. So now, You've got your line secured up there. It can't slide down the strut. It's not putting any pressure really on this tie down and it is not gonna go anywhere. And I do uh, usually two ropes if I'm storing the airplane for a long time and I know that I'm not gonna be available uh, or I'm traveling, I'm not gonna be here to check on it, you know, a couple of times a day. And then I take this extra line just to make sure I lock it in and I come through and I, and I put it through that same loop again. Now, this can slide up and down on this line right here, but it's not gonna go any further than that knot. So really all you're doing right now is you're just securing the running end, the tail end, so that it's not blowing around and, and hitting the airplane, or if it's really long, getting frozen into the ground or into the snow. You're just kind of securing the loose ends of this line at this point, and that's it. Now the beauty in doing it this way is it's like any other bowling. This could be out there getting yanked and, and, and snapped, you know, for days in really high winds. And it's, it's really easy to untie. That's the beauty of doing it this way. And so basically you just unsecure the loose end of the line, the running end of the line. And you would loosen this like you would any bowling. You got a couple points there to where you can lever some, some, uh, some space in it. And now you can pull that line out very easily and just undo everything. So now what I'll do is uh, I'll go through uh, over into the hangar next door and I'll show you how uh, I do it uh, on my Cessnas here in Alaska as well. Okay, now we're at the uh, hangar next door. A good friend of mine, Ryan, a uh, great Northern Aircraft Services here in Wasilla. Uh, he has loaned me his 185 because my 182 is sitting out in the windstorm right now. And it's dark outside, so I want to be able to show you how to do it this way. So you can see what I'm talking about uh, on the Cessna wing struts. Those are one straight tube. So this line could easily slide down if you didn't secure it up here somehow. And so there's a couple of different ways to do this. Uh, you can do it just like I did on the Super Cub earlier. You can bring yourself enough running line down to be able to tie it. You're going to bring the factory tie down loop out and you're going to run the line through this factory tie down. And as you can see, that's, that's a pretty flimsy little tie down there. And it's got not so sharp of edges, but it could put a wear point on the lines pretty easily in, in high winds. And then you're gonna go back around again for the second time. And now you have the running end of the rope, you have the anchor end of the rope. And just like on the Super Cub, you're gonna grab this line you want to be up fairly high so you don't have a, a lot of space down here between the knot and, and the strut but you're going to grab this line you're going to turn it counterclockwise and create your loop 
Once you've done that, you're going to run the running line through your loop, just like that. And then you're going to come back around this line, through the loop, and back down and, and cinch it down. And just like on the Super Cub, that line is not going to go any further than that. And there is structure that goes up to the strut, a bracket that comes down through the center of this strut. So you've got some strength there. And then you can uh, go ahead and secure this line just like we did earlier by creating a loop and then another loop up high and cinching it down to secure your loose end here so it doesn't go too far. You can actually make this a little tighter up, up closer. So if, if for some reason that knot did come loose, which it will not, but if it did, now it can go no further than, than that right there. That would be the furthest it would go. Okay? All right. And uh, there is another method. And this is the method. I don't use this method on my airplane because I put two, two lines on it. And what I do is, instead of coming back around the strut, I go around the line and back over the top, like this. I like that because it tends to keep it a little, little tighter and so now I can make my loop. I can come through the loop just like uh, before, around and back through it again, and secure. Secure the knot. Okay. And then what I do is I come around the back side first on my second line when I put it on the wing. And so now if you want to loosen it, you just pull some slack in those in that knot, pull it out, and you're ready to go. So, thanks for watching. This is the reason I, I made this video is every time a windstorm comes up, I keep getting asked how I tie around the strut, and so I thought I would do a video to demonstrate that.